Good morning and welcome to Fairview Baptist Church this morning. I know the Lord will bless you as we worship Him together uh, in love and joy and by the presence of the Holy Spirit here today. So if you would, let's go ahead and begin, Rodney, with our first hymn. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we're gathered here today to fellowship with each other and to remember the mothers on Mother's Day. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will reach down your healing hand, you will touch those that are sick and afflicted, that you will help them and you will lift up the mothers as we go through this service. Give the preacher the word that we need to hear that will uplift our soul and that we can use it for food for our soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. If you want to stand, turn, wave, smile, especially smile at our mothers this morning and thank them uh, for everything, if you would. Uh, we had a fantastic race yesterday. If you haven't noticed uh, as well, I got the T-shirt on today. I did not run. I ran around the table a whole lot of things that way. But, but the Lord truly blessed. I want to thank Twyla and everyone that helped once again Fairview this was what Fairview does, that we put on a race and everybody did what they needed to do. I was trying to pull up a comment. One of the comments that I got, I really loved. They said, they said beautiful race, running for Jesus, whatever, what else, what could be better? Some, something, well, I'm paraphrasing it, but it was just, a, and we heard that a lot. And, uh, and that's why, and one of the things, of course, we kept everyone safe. I mean, that's, that's what we do as Fairview. We, we put on an excellent race. I said the Lord blessed uh, with, the, with the weather. Um, I forgot to write it down, uh, but I think we had actual somewhere in the neighborhood of 81 participants at, that signed up to, to run, run. We had 70, I think, I, should, I forgot to write that down, that actually ran the course or something along that, that way. And of course, then we had our virtual walkers and runners as well, and those numbers will come in. But uh, it was, again, I cannot, uh, again, cannot thank you enough for your prayers, for your love, I mean, your support, I mean, from everybody uh, that helped us, uh, helped us do that. Uh, as well, as we raised our money for, the, for missions, I am, I am praying that we'll be able to go to Breathitt County and, and help with the flooding out there. So stay tuned. Uh, for some more information on that. Today is Mother's Day, and we welcome all of our mothers in honor, and we'll do that in just a, a minute as well. But today is also when we open up our Sunday school. Uh, so if you're at home, well, no, I guess if you're at home listening to this, it's a little late for that that way. But I was going to say, at, for those of you who are here at 10 o'clock, you can go to your Sunday school classes, uh, look around. They may or may not uh, move, depend on uh, where we are with the people or whatever, but we will get you to where you need to go uh, that way. And then, of course, there will be people who will come in at 10 o'clock for Sunday school, and then we'll stay for the 11 o'clock service. Uh, but we're excited about this. I know you're excited about this, and you'll pray for the, the teachers and as the Lord leads as we continue in that. 
Next Sunday is uh, officially our baby dedication. At the moment, I don't have any babies to get a dedicate, but I do have one to get a day, uh, Thomas Cash, on May the, the 30th. Uh, that way, so we're going to make that a, a, a baby dedication day as well to be able to, with the schedules and things, that's when his family can come in. So we'll be doing that on the 30th. Graduation Sunday is May 23rd, and so again, I want to remind our graduates if you'll get your certificates and pictures in to Joanne and to John Boyd, we can put our video uh, together of that. Get them in by next Sunday if you would, so we have the time to put that all together. And then for our graduates of last year, we will then just we will be recognizing you. Uh, we did the video and things last year for you, but but we want to bring you up in front of the church and recognize you and pray for you. Uh, on that day as well, so be uh, looking at that. Uh, and if you know of anybody that is graduating, uh, please let me know so, so I don't miss anyone uh, from that as well. Our uh, business meeting, we're going to move it till next month uh, in our schedule, so just make that notation on your calendar as well. I think that's it. Any other announcements? All right, Rondi, if we'll continue, please. like to start out with the uh, mother who has the most maturity and wisdom. All right, the most maturity and wisdom in our church. How far can I go, Jonathan? Is this about it? This is about it. Okay, I'll stand right here. Uh, back in this corner, anybody want to tell me which one of the, yeah, Ronnie's looking around or things. Anybody want to volunteer of who's probably, people are pointing, Joyce, <laughs> behind you. They're, they're giving you up uh, that way. So, Joyce, we want to recognize you this morning uh, for being our mother with the most love and, and maturity and wisdom and uh, instruction. Uh, so let's give her a round of applause, if you would. All right. And Joyce, as you leave, you might be able to get one of these younger folks or things, or if you want to get it, but just pick out one of our hand, hanging baskets that we have there at the front and uh, take that home uh, with you. Uh, then uh, the mother with the youngest child that's present here today. All right, the child doesn't have to be, pre well, either way, that way. Who has the youngest child? You think that's you? All right, well, we won't. I don't see anybody want to argue? 
All right, Jay McCann, thank you very much. Okay, now, all right. Now, now, we weren't talking about your husband. We were talking about your... Okay, all right. All right, I think we might have it there. If you will pick out a, uh, one of the hanging baskets and flowers that way. And then the, uh, the mother with the most children present today. So I know we've got one, two. Cheryl has one, two, three. Thomas is a handful, but he still only counts as one. All right. That way, I mean, but it, sometimes it seems like you're like three or four, especially when you're working, you're just doing all that thing. So Cheryl, I uh, didn't see anybody else. All right, Cheryl, if you would, uh, we're, there you go. I sort of looked in the wrong place. If you will take one of the hanging baskets um, with you. Let's give them all another round of applause, if you would. And men, uh, all of our men, if you would, please stand with me. And let's pray in honor, stand in honor of our mothers. And let's pray for them, if you would, this morning. Dear God, we do thank you for our mothers, for the dedication, for the love, for the sacrifice that they make, uh, Lord. And many, many, many of the things that they do are, as we say, behind the scenes. As they plan, as they prepare, as they organize, as they get us out the door, as they finish our science projects uh, that should have been done a week ago. Uh, but most of all, Lord, for their godly example, for their love for you, for their prayers and for their tears that they have shed on bended knee uh, for, their, for their family, uh, Lord, to come to know you. We do thank you for our mothers, for the love that they share. And Lord, may you continue to bless and guide and guard their steps uh, this day, now and forevermore in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, mothers. Ron, if you would then, please. If you would, please, let's take this time to thank the Lord for the blessings uh, that he has so richly bestowed on us. Uh, as Lisa plays, if you will pray quietly and uh, silently and thank the Lord for all that he has done for you.
Thank you so much for how you have blessed us this day. Again, we thank you for the love of our mothers and ask your touch to be upon them. But Lord, we know with each and every breath that we take that you are with us, that you provide for us beyond our wildest dreams, that you care for us in every moment of our lives, and that we can stand upon the foundation of Jesus Christ and know that we shall not be moved. Thank you, Father, for everything that you do for us. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Please worship together as we have our special music. <coughs> That's what I did. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, choir. All right. If you would, uh, turn with me to Exodus chapter 2. We're going to begin in verse, uh, whew, we're going to begin in verse 1. Uh, if you would, if you uh, can, and please will, stand with me as we read from God's Word uh, this morning. Exodus chapter 2, and beginning in verse 1. And there was a man of the house of Levi and took a wife to the daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived to bear a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not no longer hide him, she took him from the ark of the bulrushes and dabbed him with, dabbed it, not him, dabbed it with slime and pitch and put the child therein and laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done with him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent, her, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. And when her sister, the Pharaoh's daughter, then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. 
And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him into Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moses, as she said, because I drew him out of the water. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this glorious day and for your truth and your hand upon our lives for the joy that it is as we gather here together this day to worship and to praise the name of Jesus Christ. I pray you touch our hearts and you change our lives. I pray if there's one in the sound of my voice that does not know you, that they will surrender themselves to you this day, asking for the forgiveness of their sins, receiving the forgiveness that you so freely give and the hope of eternal life. Take our lives this day, Lord. Use them for thy glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You may be seated. Found a few uh, quotes. Let's see which ones I want to use today. Uh, let's see. If evolution, uh, spotted on a church sign, if evolution is true, how come mothers still only have two hands? <laughs> ah. Billy Sunday said, try praising your wife, even if it does frighten her at first. One mother's in our church said, mother was putting her son to bed and he was going to turn five the next day. And so she looked at him as she was tucking him in and said, son, how old are you today? And the son, of course, as we teach our children a lot, stuck up his four fingers. And she said, well, son, he says, how old will you be tomorrow? And so the little boy stuck up his five fingers and she goes, how many is that? And the boy turned around and looked at it and goes, that's a handful. (laughs) Mothers, I think, uh, didn't really laugh. (laughs) That way they know how true, how true that one really is. Mothers, we do, we do truly, truly love you. They are, mothers are a, a special breed. They tell you to be careful. They tell you to look both ways before you cross the street. They tell you not to talk to strangers. They tell you don't stay out late. And just in case you forget to listen to them and end up in the emergency room because you had an accident before you go out the door, that's exactly right. Make sure that you have clean underwear on. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know why that's, that's always been a thing. Mothers are ready for any and all situations. Think about it. Mothers can get away with spitting on their child. Okay, now I'm glad you're with me on that one. Because how many of us have been going out the door and they said, wait, and then... Licked your face and then went on out. I mean, that's, and that's an act of love. I mean, they want you to look good, even though you don't really quite like that or things that way. And that seems to be, I don't know, is that hereditary? Because that's been passed. I noticed our older people, I mean, that's been passed generation to generation to, uh, to generation as they get there. I mean, they're just special. And that's why we love them. Now, Mothers are special because they always have a plan. Maybe sometimes to us it doesn't seem like it, but they do. They always have a plan. Moses' mother had a plan for Moses. I hope you listened as we, as we read through, as we went through there. She, she had a son, and of course I figure you know what's going on here. Pharaoh is killing all the Hebrew children, and I'm not going to go all, into all of that. But at verse 22 of chapter 1 says, Pharaoh charged all the people saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter you'll save alive. That's what, that is literally what is going on here in Egypt. That every male child that is born, when they are found, they were to be picked up and thrown into the river. Now, I don't want to get into that a lot, like I said, but that's what was going on. And because of that, Moses' mother had a plan, and her plan was that she bear a child that was a goodly child, and she hid him for three months. Now, we could stop right there. Which of us mothers think that you could hide a baby (laughs) for three months? Ben, I apologize, but you slept for a week, and then you didn't sleep again for two years. 
our oldest child. I mean, that's it. Now, Josh, thank you very much. I think you're still asleep that way. That way. But, but there would have been no way that Lisa could have hit Ben for a day, let alone for three months. And we're not told what that's about. But take a guess on what that took for soldiers who were looking for male children under the order of Pharaoh. So this was no little thing. See, we haven't even got to the rest of this, and we, we will. But this was no little thing. And she hid that child. She nursed that child. She took care of that child's every need for three months, protecting his life. And like I said, we could stop right now and, and go home. Because that's what mothers do. Think about what that took at that day and that age. I mean, I don't know how they found the, the male children. I mean, I don't know if they went door to door. I don't know if they wait for somebody to tell them or whatever. But you know as well as I do that little babies are not quiet. They take a lot of care. You have to be there for them. And it would be very interesting to find out what happened during those three months. Because there came a time, the scripture tells us, Verse 3, when she could no longer hide him. So there came a time when her plan needed to change. And mothers, are you prepared? Yes, you are. Because Moses' mother was prepared. She said, okay, I can no longer do this. I don't know whether he's getting too big, too loud. The neighbors were, were talking or whatever it was. But something happened that she had to change her plan. And as a mother... She was ready. She got the bull rushes together. She got the tar together. She, she fashioned everything into that little ark. She placed Moses in that ark, and then she pushed him out into the river. That was her plan, and that's what worked. And she did what she had to do to take care of her child. And fathers, you do the same thing, but... It's not our day, <laughs> okay? So don't let me, don't let me think that, you know, that, that you're not there. But it's not our day. It's Mother's Day. We're, we're celebrating them. But she had a plan to take care of her child. And I need to understand that. And young people, things we all need to understand that. That sometimes our moms, sorry mom, our moms don't make sense. <laughs> When they tell us, before you leave this house, put on clean underwear, you're like, really? You know? Or they say, before you leave the house, drive careful. That's the one that always gets me. Because I'm like, sure, Mom, my plan was to drive crazy. You know, I'm glad you stopped me by telling me to drive careful. But they all do. Because they have a plan and a purpose and a love for each and every one of us, their children. And that was her plan. Her plan was to, it says, an ark of bulrushes and dabbed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. She knew what she was doing. And verse 4 says, and his sister stood afar off to see what would be done to him. They knew sort of what was coming next. This wasn't just an arbitrary, you know, I think I'm going to put him in the basket and shove him out and cross my fingers and hope and hope and hope that nothing happened. Mothers, we want to thank you for that. We don't always understand. We don't always agree. We don't always think that you know what is right. But when Moses' mother pushed him out there into the water, she had a plan of what would come next. Whether you call that mother's intuition, whether you call that, you know, just you know, the love. But she knew that God was going to take care of her child. And look what happened. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. Now, this is something that would have happened on a regular basis. And if it's a daughter of Pharaoh, it wasn't just a little thing. It wasn't like, okay, she went down and, you know, she'd had her entourage and things and stuff. I mean, that was a, a big thing. So mom 
knew that the daughter of Pharaoh was going to be coming down and washing herself because that's what she did. She would know where it was, how it happened, what time of day. Again, what I'm trying to make you understand is that even though we don't understand our moms, they're thinking. All right? And her maidens walked along the river's side. Once again, what do we do? Why Pharaoh's daughter is, is washing? We just sort of walk around and, you know, bide our time. Did mom know this? Mom knew this. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maids to fetch it. So when she was getting washed, she saw the ark over there and had curiosity. What is that? And she said, go bring that to me. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him, and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. What do we know? Again, this is one of the places where we don't really center on, but what do we know about mothers that made this happen? Think about that. What do we know about mothers that Moses' mother said to herself, if there is a way that I can get my live child in front of Pharaoh's daughter, a mother, that this is what would happen? See, it, it, she knew it would. Why? Because mothers are compassionate. Mothers have love. When mother would see that little baby, it was Pharaoh that made, <laughs> that made the law. But when the mother saw the baby, she had no other thought than I have to take care of this child. And Moses' mother knew that. And that was her plan. That if I can get my child in front of Pharaoh's daughter, his life will be saved. And that's what happened. And again, I want you to understand that sometimes we don't understand our mothers. Sometimes we don't think they know what's going on. But they have a plan. Who would have thought about, you know, how, how can I get my baby in front of Pharaoh's daughter in secret by himself? So that Pharaoh's daughter could say, bring it in. And she had a plan, and it worked. Because that's what mothers do. This wasn't something that she just woke up one day and said, hey, I think this is what I'm going to do. For those three months she was hiding him, she was praying every single day. God, how can I do this? What can I do? How can I take care of my child? And mothers, we know you do that. We know that you do that all the time. And we thank you for that. Verse 7, and then comes the most amazing part of how all this comes together. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child? So she said, hey, you know, we got a child here. We need a uh, we need a, a nanny. We need a nurse. You want me to go find you one? And what did she say? Yeah, go find me one. Of all the Hebrew women, I want you to go and find me a nurse for this child. Now, do you think it was any kind of an accident that who did she go to find? <laughs> who did she find? She found Moses' mother. And the maid went and called the child's mother. So again, what does this say? It says that Moses' mother didn't just put him in the bulrushes and shove him out there and go home and sit down and have a cup of tea. I don't know any mother that does that anyway, <laughs> that way. Moses' mother put the child in the ark, pushed him out in the bulrushes, and she stood there worrying and praying and wondering how this is going to work. She was right there actively involved in her child's life, even though she wasn't had her hands right on them. And that's where you are, aren't you, mothers? Thinking and praying and worrying. When you come home late at night and you broke your curfew, 
Where do you find your mom? <laughs> Probably right there in the chair praying for you. And that may aggravate you and things. And you say, Mom, I'm a big kid now. <laughs> I can take care of myself. And you can. But Mom is right there doing what she can to make sure that you are okay. And that's what Moses' mother was doing. And this is the part I really, I really, really like. I don't, that, verse 9. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away, nurse it for me. And any mom would have been really happy about there. But what's the next part? We don't really talk about this very much either. The next part says, And I will give thee thy wages. Now, I don't know if she saw that one coming or not. <laughs> but think about that. Not only does she get to raise her child, not only does she get to nurse her child, not only does she get to be in her child's life, not only does the child now is not killed, but is going to be raised up and things, she's going to get paid for it. Now that's a mom that's got it on the ball. <laughs> I, I just love that. I love that about God. God takes care of us. More than we can even think or imagine, that's what that verse means. I don't know that Moses' mom thought about that. But God did. And God said, you are going to be able to nurse your child. You are going to be able to take care of your child. And I'm going to give you something beyond your wildest thoughts or dreams. You're even going to get paid for it. Now, that may not be as exciting to you as it is to me. But like I said, that's the God that we serve that takes care of us, that watches over us. That Moses, who should have been killed, was found in the bulrushes by not only just somebody, but Pharaoh's daughter. And was not brought up by just anybody, but was actually called and brought up by his own mother. And his own mother was taken into the Pharaoh's household and raised her own child, and not only raised her own child, but got paid for it. What did I say at the beginning? Mothers have a plan <laughs> and a purpose. And that was for Moses. But I also want you to know today that God has a plan and a purpose for you. And in the same way you may not understand what mothers say and do, you may not understand what God has in store for you. You may not understand exactly what and where you should go. But I want you to know today that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. It is no accident that you are where you are and what you are doing. And that he loves you so much that he didn't just put his son in an ark and push him out into the bulrushes. He took his son and he placed him on a cross. And he bled and died the most cruel death that there ever was for your and my salvation. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. He has a design and has it ready. And it's beyond your wildest imagination of what he has in store for you. And I ask you today, if you've never accepted him, will you come and accept him today? The choir is going to come and we're going to sing a hymn of invitation this morning. And as we sing this hymn of invitation this morning... I ask you, for those of you that are home, if you want to just kneel wherever you are and bow and ask God to come into your life, ask him for the forgiveness of your sins, confess your sins, that his promises is that he will. He will forgive you of your sins and he will bless you beyond your wildest imagination. Tell him that you're ready for him today. Tell him that you want him in your life today. Tell him that you will serve him all that you can and he promises to come. And for those of us who are here, if you'd like to come to this altar and pray this morning, if you'd like to come and pray with me, you come. You allow Jesus Christ to take control of your life. You give him everything. And he promises to take care of you, forgive you of your sins, give you eternal life, and bless you beyond your wildest dreams and imagination because he has a plan for you. Leave this place today knowing that you are in God's hand. And he will truly bless you. Rodney.